this week in speed races, Birmingham all but confirmed in top spot, and as such, our thoughts turn to who do we want to meet in the semi-final. This, in turn, brings a dilemma, doesn't it, Joseph? Yes, it does. We find ourselves posing for the training training success so that we get the chance. This is true, and also on the Cradley front, I'm hearing news that uh, the Tyler Govia deal is off, and I've got to wonder... How long before Mr. Patchett blames this on Birmingham? And also, in other news, Wolves have made the playoffs. Third place looking likely for Wolves, barring a miracle. But, will it be Bellevue, Poole or Swindon if they meet in the semi-finals? Or perhaps even Lakeside. Possibly. There we go. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Uh, in the studio tonight we have the Guru. Good evening. <laughs> He's on the floor, is he? Who's just, this time. Uh, who's, yeah, who's just um, partaking in a helium balloon by the sounds of it? Uh, we've got Joseph. Hi. And we've got Matt Buck. Good evening. And uh, is it it's time for me to make an apology now, isn't it? Uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm not going to. Yeah, it looks like then. it is. Uh, I, I, no. I, I'll apologise to everybody on the South Coast who I terrorised uh, last Tuesday on the uh, motorbike that I hired for the day, but le- less of that, I think. Uh. <laughs> it was rather fun there. Right, OK, so Wolverhampton, they've got there after all that talk, and we wondered and we, we hoped, and, well, you hoped, I didn't care really, if I'm honest. <laughs> um, harsh, harsh. Um, you there? Yeah, well, I mean, I questioned last week, didn't I, whether Wolves were going to blow it, and somebody at Kings Lynn must have been eavesdropping on the show, because maximum points since then. Mm. A big win at Kings Lynn last Thursday to pick up the four points, then very comfortable win over a really poor Kings Lynn team in the first meeting on Monday, uh, followed by a, probably a surprisingly more comfortable win over Swindon in the second meeting. Mm. You know, Swindon were poor last time they came to Monmouth Green, but I thought they were, I was expecting a little bit more from them, and there was, but... It was still a fairly straightforward enough victory for Peter Adams' side to get the maximum points and book the place in the in the top four for the playoffs. How much a part do you think the Ty Waffenden factor is played in this sort of resurgence? Um, well, certainly off the track. You know, the the last meeting, few meetings where Ty's been back at the side, I think it's really galvanised the the crowd. You know, mm. the crowd has definitely gone up since he came back. Um, and in, and in fairness, you know his performances have been probably not not unexpectedly better than Jonas Kilmacorby, who will miss most of the season anyway through mm. injury. But I think was struggling a little bit on his on his return. How much of that was down to the fact that he may possibly have known that Ty was going to be replacing at some point in the, within the next few weeks mm. uh, might have um, might have played a factor. But it's certainly, you know, you can't argue that it's made Wolves stronger in the going into the running. Possibly giving you a chance in the playoffs. Well, I think so. I think Wolves will fancy their chances of against anybody really mm. in the in that top four. Um, as I say, I, I tend to think it's probably going to be Paul that Wolves meet because I, mm. I still think Belleville will finish top. That'd be a big match. It will be a big match, yeah. And I think Wolves are more than capable of, of taking Paul over two legs. Um, they've got you know they've got a few problems at the moment. Obviously, Chris Holder um, pulled out of the meeting on Monday at, at, uh, at Leicester. Um, Hans Hansen's obviously sustained an injury now as well, so um, maybe a little bit of walking wounded for for Paul. And has the the um, cut off point for signing right? Yes, has passed, it has passed so, now. Yes, yeah. so and they can't make any new signing, so it's it's either guests or or odd replacement if you're missing right. anybody, which you know isn't an ideal situation to go in for the playoffs. Okay, um, we we've got a few matches that we're watching today. Uh, we ought to mention we have got in particular the, the match that you're going to be interested in. I guess is going to be uh, Paul versus Bellevue. That's a cracking match. That's going to be you would think. Um, well, the two of them uh, had a really good meeting on Monday at Bellevue, so which Paul won fairly comfortably. So mm. you know, I'm sure no doubt it'll be there. It'll be the same again, and of course, both of you have already been to Paul and won. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, now, playing devil's advocate, if if uh, Bellevue do win at Paul, I think they might take the chance and pick them in the semi-final. I think at the moment, Bellevue would probably pick Paul over Wolves because mm. I think Paul are vulnerable. 
Um, I, t- well, I, I, I do tend to think that whoever finishes top will pick the fourth place team, whether that's Swindon or, or Lakeside. It's looking mm. like it's going to be Swindon now. But Swindon can be quite dangerous, can't they? Well, they all can, of course. But well, Swindon, of course, have already won at Bellevue this yeah. season, so. Um, but be quite a gamble as well. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask um, Webby if you'll get the uh, some of those updates up for us, and particularly the Paul mm. versus Bellevue match. Mm. It would be nice to. I should see say as well, congratulations going. to Neil Davidson for setting the new track record on on Monday. Really, uh, 52.5. Wow, that's fast. <laughs> When I started watching Speedo, it was about 59, the track record, so yeah. that just shows how, how quick the bikes have become in the last 20 odd years. You put it down to the bikes, not the riders? Maybe a bit of both. I think it's the bikes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd say probably 70 <laughs> 30 in one direction. Uh, and also, probably the track being in just the right sort of condition at, at a given time to. Well, to in fairness, right. the track size from when I started has changed to mm. what it is now, so. Who's he taken the record off? Who had Darcy it Ward. Darcy Ward, Darcy Ward right. said it a couple of years right. ago, so it's been a few years now since the Wolves riders held the, the record. Well, it's interesting, um, Paul versus Bellevue at the moment. It's Paul Pirates 10, Chris Holder is riding, by the way. Um, and Bellevue Ace is 8 after, that's going to be 3 heats, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's right. So, uh, the only um, heat winner that Bellevue have had so far is Richie Worrell. Uh, beating Bjarni Pedersen and the really fast track rider Bjarni Pedersen yeah it's a, it's a joke isn't it he hadn't done quite as well as people thought to be honest at, uh, in the reserve berth didn't do so well on uh, on Monday no and uh, Christoph Kasperzak uh, guesting has scored a, a win for Paul interesting about Bjarni Pedersen he's, uh, he's one of the, the a draft of riders that have ended up at uh, Peterborough um Tom Perry being Kenneth one of the riders sure, sure, going sure, the other so direction. Right. Kenneth Bier is the rider, by the way, not uh, okay. oh, Tom yes, So, I'd like to know whether they've managed to get him into a Premier yeah. League. So I, don't know. I know he had a poor season did, the Kings yeah. doing last year, but I don't think he had that bad a season. I'm so. going to put my glasses back on. Um, <laughs> yeah, but we'll, we'll, we'll probably talk about that uh, a bit later. We've got a few more matches that we're um, watching tonight. So, are you ready? Are you ready, Webby, to be quick on the draw here? Am I? Yeah. For what? Sorry, Swindon versus Leicester. Oh, would be not, the not that. Okay. okay, I'll get that up in a second. Okay, okay. so we, we're going to go through um, all of these matches as quickly as we can. But we're watching Swindon versus Leicester, Kingsland versus Lakeside, Paul versus Bellevue, as you know, Sheffield versus Rye House, and of particular importance to Birmingham fans, the Isle of Wight versus Eastbourne. Don't think the Isle of Wight. Bit of a derby. Yeah, well, I suppose it is. I don't imagine the Isle of Wight. Um, Beating Eastbourne. I can't see it now. Yeah, and I thought I they were it. they were a bit disappointing last night. I was expecting a bit more from the mm. other if I'm if I'm honest. I, I thought they they gave up before they got here. One of the few, one of the few, probably the only meeting this season, or one of the at least one of the very few meetings where the opposition reserves have outscored the Birmingham reserves. Mm. But really, it was the top end. Well, they, they, they their two their two reserves outscored our one reserve. Let's well, that's really. Fair, so. I mean, that, that that's sort of. You're going to be honest. So we've got Swindon versus Paul. Swindon, Swindon versus, versus Lakeside, Leicester. Sorry. Leicester Swindon versus yeah. Leicester. Uh, Leicester. We need that. That'd be great. Thank you. And the score currently uh, there is. Dun, 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 sorry, suspense. It's, it's, it's being run by young steam. I think it's uh, Swindon fifty. Is that a result? No, that's, no, a result. that's, uh, that's, the that's the last week's match. That's, that's, that's last week's. Dear mate, we can't get the staff, can you? You cannot get well, the staff. Well, you can, but you've got to pay him. That's well, the while we're, we'll do this one, and then we'll have a, we'll have a little <laughs> chat. Uh, while we're waiting, speaking of Swindon, uh, they got the new track. Go ahead. Oh, that's a good point, actually. Um, so yeah, I bet there's a great they, atmosphere. There's been a much a really buoyant atmosphere at Swindon today. So I, I, you would imagine. So you would hope so. Swindon thirteen, Leicester eleven. That's not. A, that's. Uh, well, don't forget, little. Leicester won there earlier in the season. Mm. So Jason Doyle. Uh, as, uh, and Nick Morris both scoring eight wins for Swindon and uh, another ex Bromley Paul Stark scoring uh, a heat win for Leicester as did Michael Palm Toft um, in fact Michael Palm Toft's actually on a maximum at the moment yes, the two ride maximum ok paid maximum I should say uh, yeah so yeah, Swindon they've got the go ahead uh, for their new track yep. and next, we, next door's the old one of course so yeah. And we understand that track work could well start next week. Is that right? Could start soon. Soon. I don't know how soon. Um, I think their their aim 
I believe is for, is for it to be ready to be handed over next April. Mm. So the chances are next season Swindon May will run their first few matches away from home and then catch up on the back. Do a Bellevue in it, in essence. Yes, uh, hasn't hurt Bellevue so far. No, it hasn't so, really. So, so. oh well, that that's uh, you know, there's some good news spinning around Speedway at the moment, mm-hmm. isn't there? We've got Ty Waffenden, the world champion. Back in this country, well, for now he is. Oh, well, so yeah, but even so, it, that's yeah. what it, it's, it's happening as we speak. Um, he's still in the good position to become world champion. Perhaps we'll have a look at that mm-hmm. um, in a, in a few moments' time. Um, also, uh, we've got uh, up and coming riders, a lot of good up and coming riders, and really looking forward to the under nineteen at um, Birmingham. I'm, I'm uh, looking. Commencing. I think that's going to be a really good meeting. It's be so. a cracking meeting, I think. Um, and the, and obviously Swindon getting their track sorted out. Coventry a stay of execution. Yeah, um, mm. it's nice to, to Swindon ones. Is you know got mixed thoughts on the Swindon one because it's mm. obviously great that they're going to get a, a new mm. venue. But I mean, obviously my memories of Swindon have been there when Wolves won the league in two thousand and nine. So yeah, you know, that's a, well. You, you know, know, you can say the same about um, Leicester. You can say the same about Birmingham. You mm-hmm. can say the same about um, Coventry. Of course, I mean, hopefully yeah. they will get a new track at some point. So, you know, that time, as so. they say, marches on. Uh, before we go any further, we ought to say, if you guys want to participate, we would love that. Uh, you can uh, talk to us on our shout box um, on the sports-radio.co.uk. I forgot our address for a yeah, second you, then. You can, you can join yeah. straight in with the chat. Uh, yeah. if you go, go to uh, srbradio.co.uk or srbradio.com forward slash chat stroke two. Okay. We'll just follow the links to your chat. We'll be there. Yeah. Uh, you can also uh, talk to us on Twitter. On Twitter, srbradio.com. And on Facebook. It's uh, <laughs> facebook.com <laughs> forward slash brummies. It's all the blah, 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 And you can actually see us if you, you go to that one. That if you, if you want to. Of if you really yeah, want you to. Really, yeah, yeah. I mean, you might have a bit of a shock. Yeah. <laughs> No, it's okay. We haven't actually got the camera on, Webby, so you're okay. <laughs> yeah. It's talking about your shirt, yeah. Oh, we, we did try it, but um, that's why we've only got one camera. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he's good. He's yeah. looking at Webby's back, to be fair, so he's probably yeah, yeah. not all too the bad. Best, so. yeah, the, yeah, the best well, feature. Yeah. Uh, it's, it, we're lucky that he actually he's, he's not on holiday, but... Um, that's next week. Uh, that's another story. <laughs> that's another story. Anyway, any road up? Uh, we've touched on it. Let's talk about the GP. Um, another ex Brummy won the thing. Mm-hmm. Jason Doyle. I mean, the guy's on fire at the moment. He could win it, Jason Doyle. That's the first time you've admitted that because I, could I, win I it. thought that last time. Yeah, he's second at the moment. moment. Yeah, um, he's you know he's riding on the crest of a wave at the moment. I mean, he was superb on Monday. Nobody got anywhere near him mm. at, on, uh, at Monmouth on Monday. And it's a track that he hasn't always ridden that well That's right. either. So, yeah, um, yeah there's no, no there's no doubt he could win it. It was a tremendous final with him, him and Ty. Um, I think a few people picked up on the fact that with Chris Holder finishing third that Jason said afterwards there that it was three Aussies on the podium, which was their own again. So. Yeah. Um, but no, it was a tremendous meeting. Really enjoyed it. Um, fabulous race track that uh, that goes off. And yeah, I mean, he's you know, for me now, Jason Dawes got nothing to lose. All the pressure, well, for, well, nothing yeah. to lose because nobody expected him to he's, be in. He's this, close to being in a position where he's got things to lose, though, isn't he? I mean, he's got he's got a medal to lose at the moment. I think he's a sort of rider that won't, won't be phased by it, to be honest. He seems um, to be taking it. The ball by the horns. I mean, you know, the, t- the two favourites are are Ty and and Greg. I mean, Greg looked pretty slow, to be honest, on Monday, mm. um, on on Saturday, I should say. So, but you know, if there's one rider that you wouldn't rule out and who's capable of picking up a big twenty points in a meeting, well, the fact that him, he's so. there he's at the head of the field at the moment says it all, doesn't it? I mean, how old is he now? Forty six. So. Forty six. Forty six. Forty six. Yeah. Is yeah. that for us yet? Well, maybe not. Well, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> there never has though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we've got a, a score up at the moment. We've got Kingslin 21, Lakeside 15. Lakeside, Lakeside really could need to get some away wins. Yeah, I don't know whether they're going to, I don't know. But uh, um, There's a bit of Brummy interest in that one because Danny King 
uh, is guesting for Lakeside and he's scored two points from one ride as we speak. And yeah, that's it as far as the Birmingham is. There's not many teams around that. There is some Birmingham interest going on at one point or the other. I don't know what that says about us, but it's interesting anyway. And uh, while we're chatting away, I'm sure um, uh, Webby will get up the Isle of Wight versus Eastbourne match and we can have a look at that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you were going to put your house on it, who would you think is going to win? Who would you say? Well, I still think Ty. You still think Ty? I still think Ty. I think experience is going to... I think it's actually benefited him coming back and riding in England again. Because, mm. um, you know, he's fixed his word drawing up. Oh, having said that, his Polish team have managed to somehow get into the playoffs. Oh, OK. So his Swedish team have missed out, but he's got his Polish playoffs and, of course, mm. playoffs now with, uh, with Wolves as well, so... Might be a, might be another trophy laden season for him. You never know. I would say whoever I put my house on would probably lose because I'd have a house on top of them. It's true. Well, yeah. very true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't answer. That. We ought to perhaps <laughs> ought to um, have a look at who's in the bottom eight actually, and yeah. who's on the cusp and who might not get a. Uh, well, Neil Zeverson, I don't think is going to get through. Yeah. Um, Nicky's obviously not far away. He's only ninth at the moment. Mm, so that would be a big. Big one. I would think, to be done, in fairness, I think he probably would get a pick anyway. Mm. So, mm. I mean, with his record, um, okay. I mean, people don't like Nicky, but I think the GP will be a duller place without him. So, okay, well, we've got very some... close score line on the on the island. Yeah, well, my life, that's uh, that's uh, took me back my, by surprise a little bit. Isle of Wight Warriors thirty three, Eastbourne thirty three. Uh, I've got mm. Daniel Hume guesting because obviously. I, uh, Adam Ellis will be riding um, for Paul tonight, mm-hmm. uh, but he's only dropped one point, so they're not losing out there. Uh, also, Alice Perks is doing rather well at the moment, isn't he? This is this is a worry. But I haven't got anybody else that's doing particularly well. So, well, that's that's a, that's that's an interesting scoreline because mm-hmm. they're not there yet, are they, Eastbourne? No, they're, they're not, not mathematically certain. Yeah, I think they probably will be there, but. Just need a little bit of work to do. So it, it gives us a bit of hope seeing them struggle against a team yeah. that we've slaughtered home and away, doesn't it? So anyway, there you go. Um, and while we chat a little bit more, we'll see if we can get the Sheffield versus Rye House um, scores up as well. So yeah, Neil, Neil Christian Everson possibly not. Nicky Pedersen. Possib- I think Nicky, I think Nicky will, will probably get in anyway by the mm. back door. Um, whether people agree with that or not is up to them, I suppose. But I'm uh, right in thinking Chris Harris has already. Well, Chris s- Harris has already gone out the qualifiers. Yeah. Um, I mean, in 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 fairness, I don't really see the mm. point of Chris Harris being in the GPs because he's mm. just not competitive. I mean, he had the one GP this season where he finished third, but mm. other than that, he's been. He tends to have one nowhere. season, doesn't he? Yeah, he just tends to have one. Perhaps his time's finished in the GP and... Well, I've said this for a while now. I think really he's lived off his win at Cardiff in mm-hmm. 2007, but that was nine years ago. Yeah, that's now. incredible, isn't it? So um, that's nine years ago. He's not, he's not really... I think there was one GP, in, I think it was Italy, when he nearly beat Thomas Golub in the final, but apart from that, he's not really got anywhere close to the. Is to there uh, any other British riders out there that you think might be ready... I think Robert Lambert in time, but not ready not yet. yet. Yeah, I, I think you're probably right. Um, I mean, he rode quite well on on Monday. He rode well at Mamba earlier in the season as mm. well. Um, but he's probably the the best bet, mm. I think. Um, you know, hopefully, in the next few years, you'll see some more British riders well, there's a few, breaking through. There's a few knocking about in, in the National League at the moment. Yeah, there's a few, few but I mean, there's a, um, a little bit of time. I just hope that this next generation of young riders really doesn't make the same mistakes as some of the ones that we've had in the past. I'm, I'm going to make the case for somebody now, mm-hmm. for, for in a few years' time, that that perhaps certainly would have been a surprise to be mentioned in, in this sort of company a year ago, but perhaps not so much now, given his current level of performance. And I'm basing this a little bit on Jason Doyle, because he start, he's quite late to GPs and quite late all of a sudden becoming this very formidable rider. Yeah. Um, but I just think there's been such a big, big change in one particular rider uh, at Birmingham. I could, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you can get guess who I'm talking about, Daniel Hume. It, you know, is he the sort of rider that could kick on 
Because he certainly looks like a Premier League rider right now, doesn't he? Well, it? he's going well for Ipswich as well, he isn't he? So he, yeah. he could do it, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I mean, what I was saying, really, I just hope that some of these riders, you know, they, they move up and they aren't tempted to sort of drop back down to National League or, or Premier League. I think that's Ashley Morris's mistake, mm. dropping back into the National League. I don't think it's done him any favours. I no, think you've no. seen a lot of rods who've stayed in the Premier worked League. For Adam Ellis, of course. It worked for Adam Ellis, yes, but I think there's other rods who've, st- who've maybe stayed in mm. the in the Premier League too long over the years. I'm talking around you know, Rod like Simon Stead, and I'd, I'd add Ben Barker to that list as well. Yeah, stayed in the Premier League to too long. Mm. You know, they need they need to push themselves higher. And just it's it's very well for us to say that, but if the the places aren't available for them to do that. Mm. I've almost got no choice but that to go where the work is, I suppose. Well, there is that, yes. But, um, you know, it, it, it is a shame. It I think, feels uh, very much that Polish teams, for instance, are very loath to sign British riders. Mm. And Swedish teams as well, to, yeah, to an extent. Um, you have to wonder what... I just think, really, as I say, I mean, it would be nice for, for a lot of these riders to learn, you know, riding on tracks in different countries and different approaches mm. to meetings. Mm. Um I think Danny King may well have may well have benefited from riding abroad a bit more often than he has, to be mm. honest. So, yeah, because he's, he's a tidy as, rider. As good a season yeah. as he's had so far. I mean, winning the winning the British title, and it was good to see him there. Wasn't it great? Very well last night. night so, uh, he's obviously still got a bit of an affection for the club, mm-hmm. um, which is nice to see. Okay, so we've got uh, Sheffield versus Ryehouse going on at the moment. Let's have a look at that. And it's Sheffield Tigers 21, Rye House Ro- uh, Rockets 12. Not a big surprise, is it? Um, no, not really. Two very different sorts of tracks, and Rye House not the force that they once were in that league. Uh, is there any uh, Birmingham? No. no. Interesting to see Nathan Greaves, Craigley rider, well, ex Craigley rider, um, two points from two rides. But it looks like a very. Uh, relegation, not a relegation. Mid, mid-table. Yeah. Mid, mid-table. Well, mid-table. Mid-table. I mean, Sheffield are one of the... Sheffield aren't too far away. I don't, yeah, I'm not, not so sure they're going to do it I now. I mean, we should, we should, we'll have a look at the uh, Premier League table because we missed that last week. So we'll, we'll, we'll get, get that up. up in two seconds. Okay, we'll get that up. Oh, wow, that's quick. It's good, yeah. you know. It's oh, good, yeah. Sometimes. We'll, we'll, we'll slagging it off earlier. Yeah. We'll the first person said I'm quick. Ah, oh, won't be the last. So, we've got Somerset and Glasgow pretty much, you would think, nailed on for the top two spots. 58 points for Somerset. Wow. Because second is it's a bit like us in, in the National League. Uh, and 46 points for Glasgow, 20 and 21 matches. So, they're there or thereabouts. Obviously, 24 matches uh, to a full season. Uh, Newcastle, 18 matches with 38 points. I suppose they could take that second spot off Glasgow if they had a bit of a push but it's doubtful really uh, and then it gets exciting Not uh, you've got Edinburgh and Peterborough both on 35 points with just two matches between them so 19 matches for Edinburgh and 21 matches for Peterborough uh, who seem to be make, doing everything they possibly can to uh, make that playoff I made, is it five changes? Five changes I've doesn't sit comfortably with me, to be honest. No, it doesn't with me, if I'm honest. Not that, that me. I'd argue, I'd pro- you know, probably, as I would probably say the same with Wolves, maybe doesn't sit comfortably bringing in Tyler Wuffington just for the playoffs. But yeah, but if he's covering the an injury, though, isn't it? So there is, that's slight. But Good apologies, so. apologies for my belch, then. And Sheffield in sixth place with just one point less than the two above them, uh, with 19 matches, the same number of matches as Edinburgh, and they're on 34 points. Well, going to get another three points today. Yeah. So that puts them in the playoff position. It's tight, isn't it? It is tight. Yeah, so. It's exciting. Uh, going to be interesting to see how that. Or I feel sorry for Somerset if they don't win it. They should win it. They I mean, now. I mean, you know, they're the very, very dominant force in that league. To be honest, yeah, a bit so. like us, but we could still lose it. Yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about that in a moment or two. Um, Surely that's unlikely. I beg your pardon? I said, surely that's unlikely. Uh, what, what is it we always say about Brummies? <sighs> Gala. Yeah, looking for when... Look, I know, for the worst yeah, I know. Well, I know from, I know from experience, it's not, it's not always yeah. wise to count your chickens no. before they're hatched. No, absolutely. A bird in the hand. Uh, OK, well, let's have a talk about... We've had a couple of matches 
from Birmingham. We had the away win at Isle of Wight, of course. Yeah. Um, easier win than perhaps we expected? Uh, so was this last night, sorry? No, the, the, the away win at, at um, Isle of Wight. I think it was always going to be a comfortable win, you really? to be honest. Because um, th- there's always this um, sort of worry about the track at Isle of Wight and you know, d- yeah. adapting to it. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but you know, it's a big track. It's not what it's not what everybody's used I think, to. I just think Birmingham at the moment are in that zone mm. where you know it's, it comes natural mm. winning. I think, so. Yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right. And uh, obviously, there's a couple of round offs. We had the uh, National League uh, pairs round off, and we had the match at Buxton round off. Uh, and then last night we had the Isle of Wight visit us. If I'm honest, I was a little bit disappointed in the Isle of Wight. I thought the heat leaders in particular let the side down a little bit. I thought, I mean, when I arrived, I actually, I thought, you know, Isle of Wight could possibly not win. There's no mm. way that the Isle of Wight were going to win. It would be logical to suggest that they could, but I thought they could probably push Birmingham a lot than some of the other teams have. Mm. But it, once again, it was uh, fairly straightforward for the Brummies. Um, and that's really the disappointment, I think, in this league, is that it's just... Birmingham not really being tested by most of these teams. I think we're, got, we're about to be tested. <laughs> we're, about to be, yeah. yeah. I think we'll, we'll come on to that in a moment. Um, I think so many teams, and I think this is true of the Isle of Wight, perhaps because their last match was against us, yeah. um, are beaten before they start. Uh, I would say so, yeah. Moment, I think that, yeah. Uh, but their, their reserves really... Showed the rest of the team up. I thought the reserves rode well. I thought the reserves rode very well. I was suppose. expecting a bit more from Lee Smart. Lee Smart was terrible. Mm. I thought. I thought he was probably the worst rider on view. Yeah. Um, certainly from from uh, the away side's point of view. Um, Smart has been a bit of a journey, man, hasn't he? Pale shadow, really, of, of uh, the rider that yeah, rode for, for Birmingham. So yeah. yeah, his style seemed different as well. He wasn't. He doesn't look like as if he's in the domestic condition either, to be no. honest. So, <laughs> well, but, uh, yeah. um, we got uh, just keeping up to date with a few things: Kings Lynn twenty-five, Lakeside twenty-three. Uh, I think that's an update from the Sheffield one, isn't it? Okay, well, that's, okay, well, that's um, thirty fifteen. Uh, Sheffield. I'm going to win that on the has. Sheffield. Yeah, so. I mean, I, I don't think there's any point looking at that one anymore. Mm. That, that's a done deal, isn't mm. it? Mm. Um, I thought Mitchell Davy looked good for us last night. I kept the opposition wasn't. Obviously, we've got to start looking at riders like this now because coming up into matches against Kent and so on, we can't afford to have guests that don't perform as we've had in the past. I mean, you've got to think that Daniel Halsey... You're looking at Mitchell Davy, Daniel Halsey mm. there. I think their phone numbers are going to be saved onto, mm. onto Graham Drury's uh, mobile, aren't they, for yeah. getting guest bookings? So. I, I, I think... Because I, think I, I, I suspect... You won't see Zach Vitnick again this season. It doesn't look that way, does it? No, it I don't think he's had the cast off yet, has he? So. Yeah, no, it doesn't look that way, um, which is a shame, but um, it is what it is. Isle of Wight 36, Eastbourne 36. That's Close amazing. Uh, you see, they, that, that, we, that, that, they got beat by us before we turned up. Yeah. Uh, but they're, try, that they're giving it a go against uh, um, Eastbourne, who have got some good riders in there. Um Mm-hmm. Well, that's Lee Smart's doing a lot better. Mm. James Cockwood, well, they're all doing a lot better. Good on you guys. I'd love to see Eastbourne not get there. <laughs> <laughs> I just would. I just would. It'd be nice. Um, so yeah, we were talking about. So Mitchell David did, did a good job for us, but there's really one rider to talk about. Well, there, well, well uh, there's a couple actually because Tom Bacon was on a maximum until he had that. Um, Really nasty um, fall, yeah. uh, four, uh, which he's okay by the way. He's bent his bike, from what I understand, is, is what happened. Um, so he was on a maximum until that, and probably would have, would have got it. Got a maximum, think, yeah. yeah. Um, Tom Perry back to something like his old self. Yeah, so. but the track was nice last night, wasn't yeah. it? There was a lot of. Um, there was a good outside line, wasn't yeah. it? If you got on the outside line, you got you, you got generated a lot of grip, lower yeah. speed. So, yeah. so that, that was his sort of track last night. But of course, the big one. Well, before I mention that, Daryl Richards was. I'm yes, sorry, better. Dad, much better performance. Much better performance. Using yeah, the so. track and uh, not not. Uh, yeah, had some. It was in some of the better races. In fact, your fact was Daryl he needs to get out of gates a bit quicker and make a bit boring, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, but Daniel Hume. 
getting his first maximum. So well, and, and and in style as well. He wasn't always making that gate, but by the end of the first corner, he was. Um, you know, he was going round riders round the outside on the first mm. bend. Uh, yeah, well, this this is the thing, isn't it? I mean, Daniel Hume, any club could have signed him. There wasn't exactly a clubs queuing around the block to get him. him yeah. But I mean, he was on a three point average, so yeah. it's to Birmingham's credit that they gave him a chance. I think he was, a, little bit, the I think was a four point average, wasn't it? Might have been a little bit higher. Yeah, might have been a little bit higher than three. So, yeah. so uh, yeah, I mean, we'll have a look at. Actually, we will have a look at the averages at in some points. So. Closer to down uh, Wimborne Road. Yeah, nineteen to Paul and seventeen to Bellevue. Uh, okay. Well, Bellevue have got rods who go well there, so yeah. That's um. Yeah, Bjarni Pedersen's do out at reserve for some reason. <laughs> I need to sort that out next year. They really, really do. Uh, so, Daniel Hume. I mean, we've we mentioned he's been doing really well in Ipswich. He looks like a Premier League rider, doesn't he? I think he will be in the Premier League next year. Yeah. To be honest, do you think he'll still be in the National League as well? He might as well. We can get that. Yeah. My my benefit him for one season, but mm. I wouldn't. Oh well, yeah, yeah, more yeah. than that. It might benefit his his wage packet is the thing. Although you know, yeah. if Birmingham are in the Premier League next season, then it's. Uh, well, but that's a that's yeah. a big debate for yeah. for the future, I think. So I'll mm-hmm. just read out that. Okay, so we we might even have a look at uh, Kingsland versus Lakeside as well. Isle of Wight third six, Eastbourne still thirty six. Kings Lynn versus Lakeside. The score currently is twenty eight to Kings Lynn, twenty six to Lakeside. They're giving it a go. Well, so I think Stan Lakeside will get a point, but it's mm. it's no good really. They need to start winning matches away. Yeah, from well home. they were a little way behind originally, so they pulled back a yeah. few points there, haven't they? So Kings Lynn, I mean, I'd, watching Kings Lynn on Monday, I don't know how on earth mm. they managed to win at Bellevue because they were poor. So anyway. We should talk about uh, Cradley. Um, no, do we have to? <laughs> that become that become very important to us because I, uh, I mean, for instance, they are away at, at Kent on Tuesday, Monday, isn't it? Yes. Uh, it would be be nice to think that they could dent Kent's um, right. confidence a little Rhymes, bit. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, hey! Uh, it'd be nice to think they could dent Kent's um, confidence a little bit for for us before they come to. to uh, to our track, even the semi-final of the Knockout Cup next week, and obviously, and also Cradley have got them at home as their their next home match mm-hmm. is Kent. Again, no, Stoke is their next home match. Cradley's Kent's. Yes, and the Kent so. won't. Yeah, but they have. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but so it'd be nice to. to I, I I can't believe I'm, I might even go to that match and root for Cradley. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to have a shower afterwards. <laughs> 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 Um, again, it's nice. To be nice to dent Kent's confidence, and I, I just want Cradley to get into the playoffs. I really do. I dent something after that comment. I want, I want to have the chance to beat them again, of course, but just from a, um, a monetary point of view. To, to be honest, I think if Birmingham and Cradley rode each other in the playoffs, a Perry Bar, I don't think the crowd would be that great because hmm. I don't think many Cradley fans would come. Because the impression I'll get with a lot of Crowley fans is that they don't think they've got a chance, so they're not going to bother coming. Yeah, but well, you, you're going to get more Crowley fans. You might, might not be so many come, but you're going to get more Crowley fans that might that journey than I don't know Kent fans from such a distance, perhaps. Mm, maybe not. East, I mean, Eastbourne always bring quite a lot. Bellevue anyway, fans, so. it's their second team anyway. Yeah. Um, Eastbourne, you'll get a lot of fans, but you ain't going to choose Eastbourne in the semi-final, are you? Well, not unless you're mad. So. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, I, I just think it'd be nice to to do that, and it's an and it's an easy away match to go to travel to as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so there's that side of it. Um, but we shall see. Is there anything on the shout box about that? Is, am, am I talking no, to no, little no. guff? Okay, so get yourselves on the shout box, people. Um, we should talk about. And I forgot what it was I was going to say, but I wanted to talk about it. So and we'll talk we can't about talk about it. it. If we can't <laughs> talk about it. It will come. In, it will come into my head. Uh, we should have a look at the uh, league table just to sort of wallow in the glory of how many points we are actually in front of everybody, and it means, and then say, but it means nothing because it doesn't mean nothing at this point. So we've got two more matches uh, over Kent. We've got sixty-three points. They got forty-eight. That's just 
flipping ridiculous. Yeah. It? That really is. What a team we've put together this year. That Grand Drury has put together. Um, incredible. Uh, and then you've got well, you've got a few teams vying for that place. You've got Eastbourne on 35 in third, Cradley in fourth on 31. You've got Mildenore on 30. You've got Bellevue on 29. And just to throw in the mix, Kingsley on 25. Mm, I'm not so sure Kingsley because they their wire form is not very good, is it? So. No, yeah. Mildenore, you know, still in the show. Mildenore's still there, yeah, so. Mm. So it's definitely close in the. I mean, that's, right, that's really the only interest in the league now, is it? Because I mean, it? Birmingham obviously is such a big lead. We can just sit back, back and watch it and uh, see how everybody does and mm. make our. We're going to choose Cradley in very nice ways now. If Cradley get in, I think Birmingham yeah. will choose Cradley. Yeah. But I think, they'll choose, I think they'll choose Bellevue if they get in, to be yeah. honest. So. Yeah. Whichever, whoever then just let Eastbourne and Kent sort each other out if they get the other two spots. Yeah, well, that would be nice. I, I, I would hope that Kent beat Eastbourne, if I'm honest, if that gets to the semi-final, because I think we we do better against Kent than we do against Eastbourne. We've not we've not lost at their track this year, Kent. Yeah. Whereas obviously that, that's the only le- league defeat we've had this year has been at Eastbourne. Um, I suspect that we're going to end up with Eastbourne in the knockout cup final anyway. So yeah. Um, Another knockout yeah, cup final. That'd be interesting as well, wouldn't it? Yeah, <laughs> we, we might we might look at that if that happens. Okay. You'll dress like it's nineteen seventy four, will you? No chance. No there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big suit. So we got Paul Pirates versus the Bellevue Aces nice. going on at the moment, and that the score is yeah. coming up any second. Next, give it a kick. Twenty four eighteen. So there's a little bit more of daylight between them, but not a lot. Either White versus Eastbourne, I want to see what's going on with that one. Okay. Because that's an incredible score, for, I think. Was 36 all, and now it's 36 all. In the f- <laughs> Slow match. <laughs> what a that yeah, was. Wasn't it, wasn't it just? I can't, I can't believe they managed to get that many more points since the last time we checked. So, we have Kent coming down to visit us. Uh, the first thing that we've got to be worrying about, I guess, is um, Jack Parkinson Blackburn. We still we don't still wish him all the best, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that's 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 the most important thing. Get better. Don't. Yeah. Worry, nothing else is important. It's it's just not. Um, from the point of view of a team, we ain't got many options to replace him because we've been looking at the um, the averages. averages which came out yesterday, the new averages, and Jack Parkinson Blackburn. Stays at reserve, six point seventeen, and we have to replace a six point seventeen rider with a three point a man. three point man. That's not right, is it? Well, you know, we, you can't. Is, is irreplaceable. We can't sign anybody because. Well, uh, mind you, you would argue that very few reserves have a six point average. So. Well, but that's but, uh, because we chose a good reserve, yeah. you know. They, they was there to didn't know that at the start of the season, though. So. We sort of did, actually, didn't we? Because mm. we, we had a sample of them at the end of last season, so I think we, we probably did. They could have thought a bit more, well, was the base where they don't usually think forward, do they? So. Mm, yeah. <laughs> but so that, that, that's, that, that's a possible problem because Kent are one of the few National League teams that have got stronger reserves, strong reserves that, are, that are doing better than their three point starting yeah. average. Um, so we need our riders. Uh, we need them on song. It's going to be difficult. That's going to be difficult for them. So yeah, I mean, do you think if JPB is not there, we don't win that match? It certainly becomes Certain, much more difficult. It certainly it? weakens uh, Birmingham. I mean, Kent have done well at Perry Bar, haven't they this season mm. in the meetings that they've been to? Uh, yeah, I mean, it could. It could, it could definitely. Open it more in terms of a contest. I think the key is having is choosing the right guest in place of Zach Vite, isn't it? Let's be honest. At the moment, our number one is Daniel Hume. Yeah, yeah, he's riding like a number one, which is why it's good for him to be at number two. Um, I think that's Birmingham. That's going to be Birmingham's biggest asset against Kent is the fact that they've got such a strong mm. top end that are all. Riding well at the moment. Yeah, Tom Bacon's riding brilliantly. I mean, there's not one. Daryl Richardson's one of the best. If the track's <laughs> like it was yesterday, Tom Perry's going to love it. Yeah. Um, and there's no reason for it not to be. Uh, it's going to be squeaky bum time, isn't it? Mm. It's funny because we've, we've done better against Kent at their place than we have 
at home. At, so, at home. That's right. So you know, whatever happens against Kent next next week, we don't despair. I wonder a little bit if Kent. All this stuff that's been going on between the two teams makes it a bit more juicy, doesn't it? But you feel a little bit that that Kent are a bit in awe of us. That, that, do, you, do you know what I mean? That there's a bit of a, a bit wary. Uh, yeah, and in, we, as if we've got the Indian sign over them since that that first match. Well, you'd game. argue who hasn't got who Birmingham haven't got the Indian sign over in the National League at the moment. Yeah, but uh, they came they came to our track, didn't they? And got a forty-five draw. Yeah, and we were all, whoa, hold on. Maybe we're not the best team in the league after all. At that, at that, that point, there might be somebody else that, that's better than us. Um, I mean, to be fair, we we all said that the track was not great that night. And no, didn't, it was you know, poor. It, it, it was, was poor. You know, that, it was... No, perhaps if they came to us on another night when the track was better, it would have been a different story. But ifs and buts. Yeah. Um, we're going to win them, aren't we? We've got to beat them, surely. I think Birmingham. I think Birmingham will win. Yeah. I think. I make. I think. I would say that. I mean, Birmingham have done well at Kent, mm-hmm. so I think if Birmingham. I think they're, they're more than capable of going there and, and doing the same thing again. So, in fact, I would say if we beat Kent in the knockout cup, we've to me, I, I feel much more confident about the playoffs. Yeah. It just you know, because I am a little bit worried about it. I mean, got this massive lead, but it means nothing. And you just you know worry when push comes to the shove of an injury or you know. It's all about hitting form at the yeah. right time, isn't it? So every one of the next matches that we've got now, apart from some of the the, the, the silly away matches that we've got to run, every one of our matches now is a pressure some, meeting. Yeah, it's going to be something on it, isn't there? And that's when it, which might, which you know, in some ways, might be to Birmingham's disadvantage because most of the meetings there hasn't been any pressure at all because mm. they've just been winning. But also, that's either. when people make mistakes and when injuries yeah. happen, and, and people every boat for both sides yeah. are trying that little bit more. Mm. Because I mean, to be brutally honest, I would say about ninety-five percent of the matches at Perry Bar this season haven't been particularly competitive, have they? The Kent match was about the only one, really, wasn't yeah. it? And uh, I mean, I didn't go to the Eastbourne meeting in the the league meeting, but I think Birmingham won that fairly comfortably. Yeah, I think they so. did. Yeah, um, but they didn't have Adam Ellis. Yeah, which you know, weakened them. They've got Adam Ellis like and Alex Perks, who's going like a house on fire at the moment as well. Um, talking of which, can we have a look at the uh, Isle of Wight uh, Isle of Wight Eastbourne match, please? I want to see how that's going. Thirty-six. It's going to be anticlimax again. You watch thirty-six, thirty-six currently, and now it's thirty-six, thirty-six. <laughs> <laughs> it's me. Uh, I'm guessing it's what's happening. Yeah. Okay. Well, 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 that well, way well, well, for a while, isn't it? So, um, yeah. Has there been something happening? You need to go a bit further down than that, mate. Oh, yep, yeah, something happened. They haven't got into it. Long interval. They're in a cup of tea in this last week. There we go. So, let's, uh, what we mentioned, uh, it, if you want to go to the BSPA site for us and get the National League averages, we can have a look at mm-hmm. what's um, happening average wise. <laughs> it just it makes great reading. It's uh, There's one thing for sure this team ain't staying together no chance. next year, is it? So if you go to the uh, dec- right to the bottom of their declarations and green sheet averages, I'll give over a much and go to the bottom and download that. It'll be a PDF. There you go. That's the one. That one. That's it. Okay. So we'll take a look at that. It's great radio. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? We're we're busy watching a blank screen. I've got a bit of a dance one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Through the door. Okay. So Birmingham uh, well, cut their averages. What was the 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 declaration that they had to make was it 42 and a half I think it was that to build to I think it was 42 and a half yeah mm. it's currently 51.39 that we're <laughs> we're averaging just a tad over so I mean we just go through them obviously Zach still at number one but his average hasn't changed for a while 8.59 you've got Tom Perry on 8.12 you've got Daryl Richens on 7.14 You've got Tom Bacon on 7.83. You've got Daniel Hume on 7.04. So that's one, two, three, four, five riders on a seven point or above average. That's just crazy. And then Jack Parkinson Blackburn on 6.71. So close to a seven point average. And Jack Smith, surprisingly, I think, on a 5.95 average. Uh. Mm. Nobody can touch us, can they? 
yeah, no, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm still worried. I'm st- well, we don't race on paper. That's that's the problem with that one. Let me look at Coventry, 38.91. Yeah. Oh, dear. See, Bellevue. Let's have a look at our main rivals. So, Bellevue, 44.16. Dan Bewley, his average has gone down a little bit now. It's 8.65. What's Cradley? Cradley, Cradley, Cradley are 43.84. So, yeah, they got uh, Max Clegg and Ashley Morris, of course, on nine point averages, and Luke Chessel on an 8.57. So, they're not pushovers. They're not pushovers, no, but uh, they're, they're very, very reliant, I think, mm. on the top two, aren't they? So. You look at uh, the next <coughs> best to us, I think, is Eastbourne with uh, 46.66. Mm. Um, Adam Ellis on 10.63 average. Yep. Uh, Jake Knight 8.452. Georgie Wood 7.64. Ellis Perks looks good on a 7.24 average, doesn't it? Just a bit. Uh, Gary Cotham 4.7. Charlie Powell 3.9. And Luke Harris on a 4. So their reserves are no pushovers. They've improved by mm, yep. a point or, or close to a point. Um, yeah. Ooh. I just think so many teams are beat when before they get to us. Yeah, I think that's the problem. Yeah. But playoffs is a different kettle of fishes. So no, they've got they're in the position, of course. Every team that comes to us from this point on, they've got nothing to lose, have they? That's right. All the pressure is going to be on on the mm. So we don't like that. <laughs> We're not good. We're not good in that position. But come on, the lads have got us here. Uh, in style so hopefully hopefully do you think like you know do you think because of the Brum is doing so well that mm. this season that it mm, slightly dem- demotes the demote the right word I don't know the, what the actual league does it take do you know what I'm saying <coughs> it's certainly thrown up some I I think the, I think the National League the structure of the National League needs to be looked at because mm. in, in, in reality it wasn't really when the league was put together it wasn't really designed for clubs like Eastbourne and, and yeah. Birmingham no. I mean it's, an outsider so, would look at it as a okay it's, 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 it's like a training league but, yeah. but there's one team that's going yeah. crazy yeah, yeah, but, then really again, wants yeah. To win it. but then again well I mean part of that is because the, there is different criteria for your team building some you know your Coventry's and your Bellevue's well, the Bellevue have done really well. Yeah. Mm. So, are building a team uh, uh, to train them for, pr- you know, elite league elite, or, yeah. or, or Premier League, depending on where they're from. Um, whereas we, building a team to win, standalone mm-hmm. teams. So, it, yeah, yeah and that's the difference. But you know what? I think I think a lot of it is p- t- teams like us and Eastbourne and so on making a point. The asset thing, I think mm. uh, that's. Mm. I mean, East, I mean, there's, there's all this talk about possibly Birmingham maybe moving up. I don't see Eastbourne moving up. I think they're happy to mm. stay in that league. And you, think, you think they'd be quite happy for us to go up? I think so. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think Eastbourne are quite happy to stay in that league and bully teams. Oh, to be I know honest, what so. we should talk about. I know what we should talk about. Actually, um, what I remember before, and I forgot what it was. We should talk about. I mean, it is good news. And we was talking about good news earlier. The news that there's a possible site for Cradley. Oh, that's good. Uh, I haven't seen much of it to be honest. Um, I've, I've heard the stories. Mm. Um, you know, we've heard these stories before, haven't we? Well, we have. But they don't very they've often. They've sort of died away a little mm. bit, but uh, um, it, it, it's important for Crowley. They've, they've, you know, if they've got any long-term future, they have to get their own size. The good thing about this latest report is that it's got actually got councillors talk, uh, are, are talking about it as a possible. Yeah. So I mean I think that's a positive. Well, I've got no idea where it is. No, which I don't. Is probably, yeah. that was my, which my is Cradley? Are oh, they re- looking at Cradley? It's, 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 it's in, in the Cradley area, area panel. Right, so, yeah, which is area. good because I think that's been the mistake they've made in the past mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. sort of sp- speaking out before they've got yeah. any assurances, and then somebody comes along and says, "Oh, I don't want it there." So, so okay. So that being the case, the the playing devil's advocate here, <laughs> timing's interesting. When there's a lot of grumbling going on by Cradley supporters, do you think that might have something to do with this announcement? Possibly. Being, being cynical. <laughs> Possibly, As yeah. I've been accused of before. Um, so we're, we're getting the Isle of Wight scores up, and it is... Oh, 
Okay, oh, that's yeah. so good. 40 44 in favour of Eastbourne. Come on, Isle of Wight. Come on. You can do it. Maybe. Um, it's going to be weird not for Kelsey Dugard, isn't it? Because he's in the opposite side of the pitch to the rest of his family. So. Yes. So. Well, that will, I think there might be a okay, little bit of na 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 going on there. But anyway. If he's the Dugards, it wouldn't surprise me, to be honest. So. So anyway, that that is good news for Cradley if it all turns. You know, it's it's very early. Watch this space. Oh, Lakeside winning at Kings Lynn. Twenty nine thirty one, Kings Lynn mm. versus Lakeside. Is that good news for, from a Wolverhampton point of view? You don't like Lakeside to ride out, do you? Well, I think if Lakeside get fourth, I think Bellevue will pick him anyway. Right. So yeah. it will Bellevue or Paul, whoever gets the top spot will pick Lakeside if they get the fourth spot. Yeah. To me. Danny King doing um, well. Got two and three. He says with cross fingers. <laughs> so I don't want to. I don't want to rest like so. I don't know that. Yeah. How's the Paul um, uh, uh, Swindon thing? Uh, no, Paul Bell. Paul Bell. Yeah. I just realised that. Thirty-one twenty-three. Twenty-three. So still hanging on to their coattails. Thirty-five little bit. twenty-five. Oh, not so much now. So that's ten <laughs> points in it. Yeah. 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 Max Frick's been disappointing there, only two rides, two last. So. Big difference between National League and the other two leagues this year has been the absence of the black and white helmet. Yeah. We haven't seen that at all, it's not been a... Have you missed it? Um, I don't think it's made, well, in, in the meetings that I've seen, I don't think it's made that much of a difference, really, because... Could it maybe have made that some of our matches a little bit closer, a little Possib- bit more Possibly, yeah, possibly. A little bit more? I mean, the one thing about yesterday was... All the while, got a four of nil and still only just managed to get mm. the thirty points. Yeah. Well, yes. <laughs> I think, from a personal point of view, I don't. Like, I've never liked the black and white helmet. I've never liked this. No, it's not so much the black and white helmet. It's the double points. Mm. It's making more points available. I've always preferred the double points if you get that rider starting fifteen meters back. If I'm honest, because yeah. I think if you start fifteen meters back and still why win 15, the race, why not ten? Why not five? That would be better, wouldn't it? Wouldn't it? Not five. I think five's a bit too close. But so, so seven or eight, something yeah. like that. You know, makes yeah, it a little I bit mean, more. Yeah. I'm not suggesting they start them. You know, they yeah. have to start in the pits and do a running start while everybody goes around the bend and like that. But not at walls because you'd yeah. be shattered by the time you got but, there. But you know, I mean, like, it, it would. It, it would. Add why are we stuck on fifteen meters? Why couldn't it? Yeah, if you if if it is to give that, it, particularly in the black and white helmet situation, if it to give somebody a disadvantage. Then ten meters is still a disadvantage. Seven and a half, seven meters is still a disadvantage, but you give them that more chance to be in amongst the riders by the first bend, and then do. Never really been explained why it's fifteen, mm. is it? So, I mean, obviously there's not that much space between the the, the line and pushing them back towards the. Well, the given term, that so in heat fifteen you can put somebody off fifteen meters on gate one now, that's sort of yeah. neither here nor there, is it? Uh, what is it? Yeah. So. But um, or, or you can in the other two leagues. Um, okay. So I, 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 what I was going to say on that was that I've missed having. There should be a tactical element. There should always be a tactical element. It gives the supporters something to talk about. I'm interested about. to see what this new um, race formula that they've been doing trials on is. I do is really that for the elite league. Is it? Or? I don't know whether it's okay. just for the elite league or. I do oh. really like the idea of a handicap with it because then, like, not you have to think. Yeah, would get more points, but is this rider good enough to? Yeah, I yeah think and I it adds like through. another layer to the yeah. whole. I think thing. handicap's a good idea, but I still think, but I think fifteen meters, particularly tracks like Eastbourne and Lakeside, you know, is too much. Yeah, yeah, it's oh, yeah. a long. Yeah, that's a long it's, well, thing. it's half. It's half. Yeah. A quarter of the straight, virtually, isn't it? So, um, it depends on the size of the track, doesn't it? So, and obviously, you got a track like Monmouth, which is a smaller track than it. So then, so maybe there should be a, a formula for. What that you know, a percentage of the, the, the length of the yeah, the maybe, straight, maybe that maybe. Be, you know, I don't know, it's getting a bit complicated for for us speedway people, though. <laughs> it's, it's, sorry about that. Sorry about that. Um, I don't know, I don't know, but I think there should be a tactical element. Uh, and the tactical element, the thing that always annoys me is that they state 
what the tactical when we've had a tactical element they state what it's for they say it's to make matches closer that's what I they don't say want, I, well the thing is I don't really want meetings artificially close no, ideally and that I, shouldn't I want be what it's for fairness yeah exactly and that's not and, 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 and it's, it's simple in my mind it's simple mm-hmm. and I'm only a simple person as you all yeah, know yeah, yeah. yeah you get no arguments from us it's very simple you give the tactical element whether it be black and white or the old tactical substitute or something new and shiny that I think up you give the tactical element to the away team only yeah, and you say it's stated aim is to combat home track advantage. Do you think that's fair enough? Possibly, yeah. You know, and and and, and it's easy to explain to new people. It doesn't seem it's a knockout. Yeah, which, you know the double points does a little bit, and particularly if you, if and it, it rankles if you're an away team and you're doing well, and then the home when well, you think that 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 player final Peterborough Reading Reading. I mean, you know. <laughs> but I'll, I'll point the finger more at the Reading team manager for that because he got caught out on it both. Well, times, he did, didn't so. they? But, but well, <laughs> they thought they'd won it, didn't they? That was the yeah. yeah. But you know, but he does that, and it, and it rankles as a, if the home team gets that when they should when they've already got the advantage of being at home. So that, that's what I think anyway. Well, we're going to uh, wrap up in a moment, uh, could, but could, we'll, we'll go through some of the scores. We've got Kingsland twenty nine. Lakeside 31. Giving it a go, aren't they? They're giving it a go, yeah. So, but King, I mean, Kings are not in the best form at the moment, admittedly. But We've got 35, Paul Pirates 35, Bellevue Aces 43. I'm joking, 25. Mm. It's just <laughs> saw you twitch when I said <laughs> that. <laughs> Isle of Wight 40, Eastbourne 44, it was. It's still 40, still is, 44. Yeah. Still is. I think this is, uh, I think this is the latest. Sheffield. Reload it anyway. Sheffield 37. <clears throat> right oh. House. They've got back a little bit, haven't they, Ryehurst? Yeah. Not, not enough to win in, but... So, that's all of the matches tonight, isn't it? So, Swindon, Leicester was yeah. going one way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sheffield 37, Ryehurst 26. So, gentlemen, next time we meet... It'll be in two weeks, so... Yeah, well, we, we, maybe we'll see if we can sort something out, but uh, we'll talk about that afterwards. Yeah. But next time we meet, we'll, uh, we'll certainly have had one... Maybe two legs of the knockout cup. Um, we'll have a clear idea of we'll meet each other in the in the elite league, in the, in the elite league players and the national league players, yeah. maybe as well. So, I well, hope so. We need, you know, they need to sort that out. Hopefully, I'd love it to be Cradley, but mm-hmm. and you would like it to be for Wolverhampton. It would your preference be? Uh, I think it'll be Paul. Paul, okay. Oh. Not a bad time to meet Paul. Up that yeah. thing. Okay, take care, everyone. Uh, this was the Speedway Tavern. Have a great rest of your evening. Bye bye. Good night. Bye.